You remember that one weird cartoon that somehow made it onto the network like Invader Zim or Courage the Cowardly Dog? Add in a dash of Tim Burton and you have Psychonauts. This game is weird, funny, and a joy to play. It comes from the mind of another Tim, Tim Schafer. Originally, the concept of Psychonauts was just a mere section of Schaefer's previous game, Full Throttle, in which Schaefer wanted the game's main character to have a peyote-induced trip. This didn't sit well with the higher-ups, and led Schaefer to found Double Fine Studios and evolve the concept to a full-fledged game, Psychonauts, which released in 2005. The term Psychonaut refers to someone who explores altered states of consciousness and often refers to hallucinogenic drug use. I need a way to get even higher. Like, super high. Hey, hey man, have you ever done mushrooms? Hey, hey man, have you ever heard of DMT? The game Psychonauts doesn't feature drug use and instead has you directly exploring the mind. So let's just jump right into it. We star as Rasputin, or Raz for short. A runaway circus performer with impressive natural psychic talent. Growing up, Raz read comics about the Psychonauts, a team of international psychic spies, and decides to break into their secret government training facility to join their forces. I mean, he broke into a completely normal, not suspicious or dangerous, summer camp. At camp we meet a very colorful cast of characters like Lily, the fiery love interest, the bully, Bobby Zilch. I'm the strong man around here! Really? Because you look more like the cotton candy. Oh! Nils, the ladies' man. You know that cabin is empty, right? Duh! I'm practicing for tonight, when it's gonna be full of ladies. Later that same evening. I'm beating my meat! And Dogen, the homicidal maniac. And, and then you'll make their heads explode? No. Do you do that? No! Well... Once, kinda. One time, I made someone's head explode. Actually, it happened four times. I'm telling you for the last time, no! I would never do that. I could never... kill everyone. There's also these cheerleaders who seem up to no good. Wow, those two are so nice. Why'd you throw yourself off the roof? Because the poison didn't work! Listen, I have to go! Rasputin's name was inspired by one of the animators named Raz, but I think this mention of poison failing is a little reference to the real-world Rasputin, a Russian mystic who, after a uh, interesting life of faith healing, was assassinated by Russian nobles. Supposedly, he was poisoned with cyanide, survived, was shot in the head at close range, survived, was beaten to death, survived, and was finally bound and cast into a freezing river. After meeting our campmates, we head off to basic braining to learn the ropes. Now get in here and give me 20. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Here we learn the basic mechanics about exploration. There's these drawings called figments to find. 100 figments grants you one Psy rank. Reaching higher Psy ranks nets you additional psychic powers or power-ups. There's emotional baggage to sort. Finding all emotional baggage in a level increases your Psy rank. And finally, there's vaults, which show us memories of the person whose head we're in, usually showing pivotal moments, causing the creation of your subject's mental battlefield. The basic braining course is also our playground to get used to movement. Psychonauts is a platformer, so good movement is essential. Platformers aren't very popular anymore, so playing them can sometimes feel dated. Especially if you're not playing something like Mario, where the standard for gameplay is so high. Psychonauts feels great to play. It's responsive, and it's honestly a little refreshing compared to modern games where the controls can be hindered by realistic walking animations. It starts you off with a double jump too, which is always nice, and makes some of those early jumps more forgiving. After basic braining, we get invited to Agent 9's special training. This is where we first learn combat, 
and where we meet our main enemy for the game, sensors. This is a sensor, an integral part of any sane person's mind. The sensors roam through your psyche, looking for thoughts that don't belong, hallucinations, manias, waking dreams. It's kind of funny to think that the main enemy is a sensor, seeing as how Psychonauts is the product of a peyote trip idea that was censored out of full throttle. Combat is in the game, but it's not really the focus. Most of the powers you gain are for utility and solving puzzles. Later on, you'll visit Agent Videlo to learn Levitation, which is where the game really comes together. Levitation allows you to float from a psychic balloon or to walk on a psychic ball. Walking on the ball lets you move faster and introduces momentum, traction, which adds depth to how you traverse the environment. It's very easy too, to transition between walking, balling, jumping, and gliding. It just feels good to move. Raz is also a trained acrobat from the circus, giving him a reason to excel at platforming tasks like swinging from bars and doing flips. Raz's backstory is also used to explain why you can't swim in the lake. My family has this problem with water. It's a bunch of hooey anyway. Some old gypsy curse about how we're all supposed to die in water. Lots of older games made water off limits, likely due to developmental limitations, so it's nice to have a canon reason for Raz's aversion to water. But in Psychonauts, we're going to explore much more than a simple lake. The wars of this modern age, the psychic age, are all fought somewhere between these damp, curvaceous, the human mind is the backdrop for the game, which means the potential for level design is limitless. This is where Psychonauts really shines. Having the game take place in the human mind, in the imagination, allows for anything wacky to exist and still feel perfectly at home. I mean, what game can you have a meat circus and have it make complete sense? At one moment, we're inside the mind of a mutated fish where we're a giant Godzilla-like monster ravaging the town. The next, we're mediating a board game between Napoleon Bonaparte and his descendant. And then we're in a paranoid neighborhood where even the animals are just hidden cameras, always watching. It reminds me of Kingdom Hearts with all these different worlds to play in, except everything is surreal. We start out learning the ropes in the minds of sane people and as things in the real world start to spiral out of control, we find ourselves in the minds of the clinically insane. While exploring our subject's brain, we uncover their traumatic memories and help heal their mind. It's similar to Persona 5, where you steal someone's heart to tame their desires. The inspiration for and severity of the mental battlefield does differ greatly from subject to subject. Skip ahead to avoid some spoilers here. There's Gloria Von Guten, who suffers from bipolar disorder and a traumatic upbringing, whose stage features a manual mood override to switch between happy and sad performances. Her mother, also an actress, abandoned her to a girl's home run by a cruel headmistress. After enduring years of harsh training, Gloria became a successful actress, outshining her mother who became bitter and jealous towards her. Resentment grew and Gloria's mother disowned her before eventually committing suicide. Gloria wanted nothing but her mother's love, which was now forever out of reach. Gloria, traumatized and full of guilt, became entrenched in a mood disorder and was unable to act anymore. She was committed to an asylum and faded into obscurity. Heavy stuff. Then there's the butcher's son, whose pet rabbit was killed in front of him and sold for meat. Then there's Edgar. His girlfriend in high school broke up with him. That's it. You make light of my mental problems. Regardless of what judgments I have, this guy is still in pain and we're here to help. He also happens to have one of my favorite themes for a level. These black and neon streets look awesome. Plus Raz gets a new outfit and we get to jam to these Spanish beats. So why are we even going into these people's minds? The actual story of Psychonauts is not about just going into people's brains randomly. We've come to camp to become a Psychonaut, and while we're there, stumble upon the evil plot of Dr. Lobato and his evil overlord, who are stealing people's brains and turning them into machines of war. Along the way, we encounter people blocking our path to Dr. Lobato's lab, and we enter their minds to clear the way. 
let's do a quick summary. Obvious spoilers here, so skip ahead again if you would like to play the game unspoiled. Raz joins the camp, excels in basic braining and nine special training. Raz starts to have visions of other campers getting their brains stolen. He shares his visions with Lily, who also suspects something suspicious at the camp. Raz meets the legendary Forward Cruller, a once formidable psychonaut who was confined to the underground of the camp due to an injury during a psychic duel. Cruller sends Agents 9 and Vodello on special business. Then children start showing up to the camp, acting like brainless zombies or your typical member of Twitch chat. The stakes are raised as Lily appears next on the brain chopping block. With Nine and Vodello missing, it's up to Raz to investigate as Cruller's field agent. Are you ready? No, not yet. How about now? Raz's visions show him the dreaded Dr. Lobato is conducting experiments in a lab across the lake. But we can't swim. To cross the lake, we need to enter the mind of the mutated lungfish. You have unchained my soul, and now I shall repay you, powerful human child. Oh, uh, great! We cross the lake, enter the asylum, and help three inmates there, who give us items which allow us to disguise ourselves as Dr. Lobato and enter his lab. With the help of Dr. Lobato's assistant, Shigor, and a very sexy turtle. That's right, baby. Daddy's here. Everything's gonna be alright. We turn the doctor's plan against him, and the escaped inmates blow the doctor's lab to pieces. It's revealed that Coach Oleander was the overlord all along, and after a showdown with Oleander's think tank, Raz is ambushed with sneezing powder and loses his brain. Oleander and Raz's brains become intertwined in the tank, leading us to the hellish nightmare that is the meat circus. I mean nightmare both in presentation and in its final platforming challenge, which I clearly was not cut out for. We fight Oleander's dad. Don't run, or else daddy's gonna kill ya. Our dad. What have you done to our circus? And finally, a merge of both dads. After untangling our minds, we return to camp and rebrain the other campers. Raz is celebrated as a hero and asked to officially join the Psychonauts. It's a special quality of your heart. Not your mind that truly makes a great psychonaut. This young man has it. All right, let's recap some pros and cons. First, the sound design. I love video game music, and Psychonauts has some pretty good music. But one of the first things I did in this game was turn the music down because I couldn't hear anything else. This game can still be pretty noisy outside of the music too. In this particular clip, you have the music that's still too loud, a little teleporter guy nearby vaping really loudly, and enemies that are attacking at nothing. Hey, can you help me get up to the catwalk so I can fight that phantom? Ah! Can't get there from here! <laughs> it makes it really hard to focus on the dialogue. Cutscenes. This game is upscaled, but pre-rendered cutscenes are blurry. There's not much you can do about that, but in-game cutscenes have some flaws too. They don't always fit the widescreen, or are just a little buggy, with sound clipping out or characters running into walls. This stuff happens with ports of old games though. The pace. Just when you start getting on a roll and have actually beaten your first real mental battlefield, the game grinds to a halt and makes you walk around collecting currency to buy the next item for progression. Later there's a puzzle that invisibility is highly recommended for, which made me again have to quit progressing and go grind Psy rank as well. I looked it up and turns out there is a different way to progress past this using your starter Psy Blast, but in this instance my game was so buggy I couldn't get that to work. I had to leave the whole area, come back several times until invisibility just worked. Just worked one time. Enemy variety. There's sensors and there's big sensors. During Edgar's world, you fight basically the same boss four times. 
It just seems like an oversight where the rest of the game is so creative and varied. And that leads me to combat itself. Combat is not very in-depth. You can punch, you can shoot lasers, and you have a dodge that doesn't really work. But the boss fights are puzzles, not tests of skill, so this isn't really a huge issue. And again, it feels like the game is more focused on exploration. Alright, so what about the good stuff? Psychonauts is unique. It's one of those games that's always stuck with me. i played a ton of platformers, they used to be a dime a dozen, but Psychonauts has this character and charm that makes it stand out. It's the little things, like with the power clairvoyance. This lets you see through other people's eyes, and is used in creative ways for gameplay, like spying through someone's eyes to see the passcode they type, or through the enemy's night vision to level the playing field in pitch black. It's also used though for little easter eggs in the real world. If you use it on Agent 9, your mentor, he sees you as a little version of himself. If you use it on Agent Videlo, she sees you as a little baby to protect. If you use it on your girlfriend, she sees you as a romantic hero. It's little things like this that make Psychonauts feel so memorable. Collectibles. Collectibles are optional, other than collecting currency for the cobweb duster, and they're not the main focus of gameplay. Sure, I had to stop and grind a little bit, but that wasn't all I was doing in the game. In modern games, it can feel that way sometimes. You'll have this vast, open world, with nothing to do but run from one collectible marker to the next collectible marker, spending hours to get a minor upgrade. It's just padding to increase the game time. In Psychonauts, you can spend time hunting for figments and baggage, and it'll give you some meaningful upgrades, like new abilities or significant upgrades to current ones, but you can largely ignore these too. You don't have to reach max high rank to beat the game. I finished this playthrough at 49 out of 100. Movement. We already talked about this, but it's just plain fun to jump and glide around on Levitation Ball. That psychedelic style. They really nailed the spy aesthetic with the character design and the craziness of the psyops that were supposedly happening in the CIA around the Cold War. The music also has that mysterious guitar sound you hear in spy movies. Humor. This game is packed full of jokes. For example, to summon help, you don't just pull out a radio and call somebody. You have to wave bacon near your ear, and the smell attracts Agent Crawler. Raz is witty, and he's fun to have in the spotlight. I've got the brain of a little girl back in my lab that's strong enough to power a whole army of psychoblaster death tanks. Huh? What? You've got the brain of a little girl? I said, in my lab! I think you've got the muscles of a little girl, too. <laughs> Good one. The voice cast. This cast has a ton of strong performers that really elevate the game. First there's Richard Stephen Horvitz, who voices Raz, and has voiced Invader Zim and Billy from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Tara Strong. Legendary voice actor, you may know her for Timmy Turner or Twilight Sparkle. And the man himself, Steve Bloom. He's voiced tons of characters, most notably in my mind, Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. And his performance really makes that Milkman conspiracy level that much more ridiculous. Stop. Road crew workers only be on the yellow line. You guys are road crew workers? Yes, we work on the road with these red signs. I see. Well, do you guys know where the milkman is? Why do you ask that question? Are you the milkman? Though I do not receive a paycheck, I consider my homemaking to be my occupation. I am making a pie. I hope you are not trying to steal my husband, Tramp. Lastly though, the biggest pro, the best thing about Psychonauts. It let me finally get a girlfriend. Nope. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. You've been watching Tiny Guard, and I'll see you in the next one.